what happens to factor prices when countries trade. I'm going to explain this with an example that I have used in the previous video on factor prices and factor endowments. There were two countries in that video, US and Mexico. The US was a capital abundant country, Mexico labor abundant, and as a result, explained in that video, wages were high in the US compared to wages in Mexico, and the real interest on capital was higher in Mexico than in the US. Now this was before the countries engaged in any kind of trade. Now let's say both the countries produce two goods. One, a laptop computer. Two, shoes. Both these goods are produced using both factors of production. To produce a laptop, you need a little bit of labor but a lot of capital. To produce shoes, you need a lot of labor, but just a little bit of capital. Now notice that you require more capital per worker in the production of laptops than you do in the production of shoes. So by definition, laptop is the capital intensive good. Inversely, you require more labor per unit of capital in the production of shoes than you require in the production of laptops. Therefore, shoes are a labor-intensive good. Now what would happen if the two countries opened up to free trade with each other? According to the heckscher olin model, the capital-abundant country, US, would export the capital-intensive good laptops and it would import the labor-intensive good, shoes. Similarly, Mexico, the labor-abundant country, will export the labor-intensive good and import the capital-intensive good. Now, how is this trade going to affect factor prices, that is, wages and real interest on capital? Now, let's talk about the U.S. first. In the US, laptop production is going to go up while shoe production is going to fall. Now, as laptop production goes up, it's going to increase the demand for labor. But because laptop uses only a little bit of labor, the demand for labor is going to go up only a little bit. On the other hand, as shoe production falls, it's going to free up, it's going to release, it's going to supply into the economy a lot of labor because shoes were using a lot of labor. So as a result of international trade, there's going to be a little bit of increase in the demand for workers, but there's going to be a lot of increase in the supply of workers. Now what happens when the demand increases a little bit, but the supply increases by a whole lot more? Well, the prices fall, and in this case, the price is the price of labor, and that is wages. So in the United States, as a result, wages are going to fall. What's going to happen in the capital factor market? Now, as the production of laptop goes up, the demand for capital is going to go up by quite a bit, because laptops are a capital-intensive good. As shoe production falls, the shoe industry is going to be freeing up capital to be used into the laptop industry. But the, the amount that is being freed up, the amount that is being supplied, is going to go up by only a tiny bit because shoes were using only a little bit of capital to begin with. So there is a great increase in the demand for capital, but there is only a small increase in the supply of capital. So what happens? when demand increases a lot more than supply of something, well, then the price of that goes up. And in this case, the price of capital is nothing but the real interest rate. So in the US, the real interest rate is going to go up. What's going to happen in Mexico? Now in Mexico, notice the opposite has happening. The shoe industry is expanding while the laptop industry is contracting. As the shoe industry expands, the demand for workers is going to go up by quite a bit because 
shoes require a lot of labor to produce. On the other hand, the laptop industry in Mexico, which is shrinking, is going to be releasing only a little bit of labor. So the demand for labor is going up quite a bit. The supply of labor is going up only a little bit. So what happens to wages of workers in Mexico? As you guessed it, the wages of workers in Mexico will be going up. What will happen to the real interest on capital in Mexico? Let's see, as the shoe industry expands, it's going to increase the demand for capital, but only a little bit. On the other hand, the shrinking laptop industry is going to be releasing a lot of capital. It's going to be increasing the supply of capital into the economy quite a bit. So what will happen to the price of capital in the economy? Well, demand increases a little bit, supply increases a whole lot, so that means the price of capital will fall. In other words, the real interest rate in Mexico will fall. Now recall that the wages in the US were higher than wages in Mexico. If now, after trade, wages in US are falling and wages in Mexico are rising, it means that the gap between the wages in US and Mexico will become smaller over time. Similarly, the gap between the real interest rate in the U.S. and Mexico will also become smaller. And if there is complete free trade, there is, there is very little or none transportation costs, then free trade will actually eliminate the gap between wages in U.S. and Mexico and the gap between the real interest rate in U.S. and Mexico. So what we are going to have is equality in wages in US and Mexico. Same with the interest rate. Now this prediction that international trade equalizes factor prices in the two countries is known as the factor price equalization theorem. Okay, So this is a pretty startling and a very very uh, important prediction that is made by theory. So once again, let's recap what factor price equalization is. It says that when two countries engage in trade, the trade increases the return on a country's relatively abundant factor. So in the US, the return on capital went up, and in Mexico, the return on its abundant factor labor went up. But international trade decreases the return for the country's relatively scarce factor. In the US, the relatively scarce factor was labor, and so the wages of labor fell. And in Mexico, the relatively scarce factor was capital, and so the return to capital fell. And as a result of these changes, the prices of factors of production will equalize across countries.